those of you who are just tuning in, I'm Quartermaster U, uh, Jacob Liam, the brand and user acquisition manager here at Standing Stone Games. Um, we are celebrating 10 years of Middle Earth as doctored here in the Lord of the Rings online. So wanted to thank you for all sticking around. And we got Quarterman and... Sev coming into the room and we're going to talk a little bit about the future stuff that you guys have probably been waiting for all day uh chomping at the bits the tables have turned oh dun, now dun, i'm dun. staring at the camera that every dev has been staring at this afternoon yeah 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 um it's not bad though yeah so uh <laughs> don't talk to me about the future, Q. You, you admitted you don't understand how time works. See, this is why I don't talk. I so leave all the talking to So there Jerry. are how many how many beats are in a swatch day? I what? <laughs> really, nobody knows about this. Okay, no. never mind. It's Sixteen fine. bars. What? I happen to be mildly <laughs> obsessed with alternative <laughs> forms of timekeeping that have existed from the internet age. Okay. You know, how there was, like, you know, Bitcoin and things like that. Yeah. There was a movement also to try to create different times, to get rid of time zones and have one universal time. Interesting. And so I happen to, to have a nerdly scholarly interest <laughs> in all these various failed forms of time. So, yeah. Having, uh, yeah. having previously worked on calendaring apps, anything having to do with daylight savings time just aggravates me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, but back on the real subject. We're yeah. here with uh, Severlin, and uh, thank you very much for being here. Sure. Although I don't really know, other than like being able to watch bits of the live stream as I worked, I'm not sure what people covered, so you may have already talked everything out that was ever had anyone ever had to say against about Lovejoy. Well, we pretty much no. spent the last six hours talking about how much we dislike you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> he gets us pizza. He's fantastic. So, uh, you know, clearly you're the executive producer of both games here at Standing Stone Games, and the big priority that we're just moving full speed ahead on here for Lord of the Rings Online is our Mortar expansion. When, what would you say the current state of Mordor is? Uh, it's pretty good, actually. Like, usually, everybody is sort of geared up and working hard. And as we go through and update the schedules and things, uh, everything is falling to place. I think that what we're worried about right now is we want to make sure that we don't have dependencies that derail people. Like, if one thing... Lotro has a lot of dependencies. There are times when content is depending on art and art is depending on uh, content and systems is depending on engineering. So any one of those could kind of just cause a backup like a traffic jam. But we're looking pretty good on that. And the other thing is iteration time at the end. But that will be post Bull Roarer so that we make sure we have enough time not only to iterate with mm -hmm. our own play days, but so that the players who play the game and give us feedback, we have enough time to iterate on that. I think that I would rather have a mortar that came in late that was really, really good and incorporated the player feedback than push it out too early when it's not baked. So we considered moving the anniversary date to, you know, whenever we were ready to announce all the details on Mordor, but... Uh, you know, the you reality can't. The reality is we're kind of in this weird position where we can't really mention, like, our current target date or when we're going to Bull Roarer, right? Well, yeah. it, the, the, this, is, this is the scheduling thing that yeah. we, we always run into. But um, what it comes down to is we're working on it. We have a general seasonality target. Um, why yeah, not? that's actually a good point. Yeah. Yeah, can we give a little seasonality target here? Yeah, we're hoping to get some sort of bull roarer action in June and then have it come after that in the summer. Woo! Probably, hopefully not late in the summer. Like I said, we're looking good right now, but I want to make sure we have enough iteration time on all of the cool bits and pieces because there's a lot to it. Right. Yeah. Um, getting any anything known on new character models and animations? I know we talked about that. A little bit earlier uh, with some of the artists um, is that's that's being done on top of this right it's not 
yeah. going to be gated by it, right? Yeah, it, right? This is about the experience. Yeah. No. So what will happen is the the new character models won't be gated by Mordor um, because so what we're hoping for is we have the tech so that you can go in your preferences and see the old models. We're not replacing them. We're we're um, we're adding new ones that the game will use instead. But if you prefer the old look, the classic Lotro look, which some people may, uh, we're we're hope we're hoping to allow for that. We haven't tested the whole thing in it, so like like everything, as we test that that may cause problems. But right now it's looking good. So when you you should be able to f go in and find a look we're trying to make each look be in representative of what you look like now but just make everything look better and because aesthetics are a personal sure. thing yeah. that's a hard thing to do yeah, so as a fail safe you can always go into your preferences and go back to the classic look if you want to I had, uh, I know also just kind of in a, a general time frame, we're hoping, hoping, you know, remember hoping, at this point to get the Avatar character update out toward an earlier part of the bull roarer process right. so right. that we can get that community feedback on it and uh, have a little more iteration time. So I would expect for those, you know, looking forward to these upcoming bull roarer updates that the character update may be one of the earlier ones there. Yeah. Hopefully. Like, there's a lot of work between that and the High Elf. Um, it's just a large amount of work. I think that even if we fall behind, in the early Bull Roarer, we might be able to do something like some of the races are in the Bull Roarer 1. Maybe not all of them, so you'll have, you know, for example, your elves may be the old style, but the humans and the um, hobbits are updated already. And that's something that we can fall back on if... Uh, we run into issues on that. So I got I have a question directly from YouTube for you. Uh, what's your biggest motivation for Lotro, and what can you share about the ways in which you see Lotro growing in the future? Well, one of the things that one of my goals for the future with the players. So overall, I have two goals: bring the players as much fun as possible. I just want the games nice. to bring them joy and make sure that all of the people in the building are also uh, have a stable and happy environment. So those two things are our main goals. How we do that, that is sort of the rub. So for Lotro, we love Middle Earth. Absolutely, and yeah. Tolkien was an archivist, so I think that it's such a great world that the story was fantastic, but in some ways Middle Earth is even bigger than the story he told, which is rather impressive because I loved all of the Tolkien tales. And I think that we want to show the players the world at large even after Mordor. And yeah. that's one of the things that the people who are working on it are really excited about, yeah. to move into other areas that the players might not have seen. Not to say that Lotro doesn't have all sorts of cool storyline and history and you know exciting secrets in and of itself so moving forward it's move the current storyline has always been about these iconic heroes that tolkien created and how great they are i think that part of the moving forward will be now you're the hero right like aragorn is a little bit busy ruling gondor now and you know maybe getting married <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh you know and so what happens then who who right. takes up the mantle and and sure. that's one of the things that we want to talk about um i think that this will be a important expansion because it's the first expansion in a long time that concentrates on the core gameplay some of our other expansions introduced large new features, which was great and necessary for those at the time. I mean, how can you do Helm's Deep without big battles, and how can you do Rohan without riding? But for Mordor, it will concentrate on the core features and the core uh, gameplay that the players have come to love in terms of, you know, going in there, uh, trying to defeat 
the things that still threaten men and elves and hobbits and and women. I use men in the Tolkien-esque term, not to. We're from Boston here. We say guys a lot. Guys. Yeah. You know, <laughs> use guys. Um, them guys. So that's all of those things are I'm, I'm excited about for for Mordor. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, obviously, been getting questions all day about uh, Mordor, or when's the expansion, when's the pre-order, and 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 we really want to talk about it, uh, and we're waiting too, right? Yeah. And we just want to talk. Like you've seen the anxiety on all the devs' face. Can I talk about that? Yeah. You know, do we do we want to? Talk about that? Well, and part of it too is, you know, especially when it comes to things like our like pre-purchasing and things like that. We we're yeah. just not really ready we don't want to set an expectation sure. that frankly we're still talking about some of those right. things i mean we know kind of in a general sense what our plans are but there's going to be there's still plenty of fluctuation there to kind of solidify it and and go through all the process that needs to go through and so we're just a little early on some of those questions um i, I guess i'll take that as a good sign though that people want to pre-purchase yeah them. absolutely so, um it, We've also been getting some loose questions around like class balancing and and yeah, stats like yeah. that. And I know that we're we're building mm -hmm. some road. You know, we're talking about a level increase and we're sure. building that in and, and so forth. Um, any any plans beyond uh, any of that? Or have have we? Well, talked? so people understand the layout of Mordor. You're going into a very dangerous place, the most dangerous right. place in Middle Earth up to this point. So, I think the players will go in and be able to continue on the epic storyline. And when you first go into Mordor, things will be a continuation of the story that you've come to love. But as you go into Mordor, if you continue deep into Mordor, into those shadows. Before you're ready, I think that the players might be in for a shock because I don't think that Lotro has shown other outside of raids a great level of difficulty in the landscape. And so if you pace yourself, you should be fine. But if you overcommit and go into areas that you're not ready for yet, it might be a little bit of a shock when, yeah. you know, the creatures there and the shadow, uh, the shadow that empowers them kind of is tough. That's our goal on that. Now, some of that will be tough because we understand that some of the classes are tougher than others. A guardian may not have the same experience as a, as a burglar, and we do want to address that. Sure. Um, once that happens and you've experienced the story that um, we're trying to tell and uh, how you look at the epic story and how you uh, sort of expand your alliance with the various uh, factions that are going there, mm -hmm. then we will follow up. And I'm sure that Ryan has talked about the raid yeah, um, yeah, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. yeah. So once you people have had a chance to level up and to gear up and to experience Mordor at their leisure, then we'll be coming out with a raid and some group content to follow up on that and continue along those lines. And awesome. so that will be that will be fun. So if you could answer what's more dangerous, Mordor or getting in between a hobbit and its pie? What? kind of pie see <laughs> see the the key it there depends. is 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 more more like i get what i'm guessing is that each it depends on a the pie right and b which of the hobbit families you're talking about yep right yep. like the bagginses Pies. have a certain kind of pie that's far more dangerous whereas the underhills may be you know not such a good a pie guys there's also a difference you know death is obviously final but it's quick whereas mm. the kind of earning the wrath of a hobbit is mm. a long that's a know, long time yeah they, they're going to make your life miserable for a very very long time so, so. i'm seeing a lot of uh positive thumbs up on difficulty and um everybody seems seems really happy we have lots of open questions obviously there's tons of stuff throw them out Oh, oh, man. Yeah, oh, actually, let me let me ask one here yeah. quick because we we you, referenced yeah, this earlier can. about uh, class balances, mm. and that is one of the most consistent questions that I get every uh, Thursday on the show that I do here on Locho Stream. Nice plug, huh? Hey, no, it's not nice if you call it out. Thank but you, uh, the follow. But let's talk just in kind of general terms. How do we plan to address the remaining community uh, wants? when it comes to balancing all the classes, both in regular content, in PvP, in all the various states of the game. Do we have any kind of... How do we, how do we basically plan to tackle this one? Sure. So, 
instead of going and doing a class pass and then another class pass and then another class pass, I think what we're planning on doing is we're going to do across the board a number of tweaks to each classes to slowly bring them in balance. So we're not, other than Bjorning, which needs some work, needs some work and some of the broken bugs that we've tried to do in Guardian, for instance. Even though Guardian, I think, is in pretty good shape, there are bugs and there's just some stuff that's not functional. Yeah. Besides those two things, we will continue sort of adjusting small and the the lesser classes will be brought up. And if there's outliers, then we may actually do some nerfs. I don't really like doing nerfs, but there's a certain level at which there are just outliers that it would just be bad for the game in order to bring everyone up to them and there's just a, a certain level of that so we will refrain from nerfing as much as possible but i i it may come down to some of the uh some of the stuff may may need that yeah and i'm i'm assuming that you know bergs are going to get some love love to have some questions about burglars but you know, burglars again, hunters about... i mean even guardian even though it's strong there are some guardian trees that have fallen behind sure so but what will end up happening is we'll do some tweaks to a number of classes each pass as they slowly move now what will happen is the players who play those classes i'm sure will be anxious because when they see it they'll be like some good tweaks and they'll be like oh my god that isn't enough are they ever going to visit my class again so usually in the past this kind of balancing is difficult because of the the player's expectation and there's sort of almost an anxiety about that not to i don't want to overstate it but like the players are worried that we'll touch their class once and never touch it again once we begin the process we would rather do a, a short sort of line balance because i've done the class by class balance pass as well but the problem is with that is when you're halfway done and half of the classes are in good shape and the other half haven't been touched yeah and you also run into a situation where a class that you maybe first balanced from top to bottom once that landscape changes as you progress then you've got a whole different series that you need to reach so by doing you know more iterative work to to kind of write it as a as a wider swath you know you you hopefully get a more consistent result for a longer period of time some of it you saw in burglar and hunter i mean we've already touched those and i think that those uh those buffs to those classes were were generous but not overblown and clearly they didn't have the full revamp of the play style that the players really you know some of the players of those classes were hoping for kind of a bottom to top and when they came back to us they were like i don't know that this is enough and like you may be right and as we continue and do our dps testing and the harder part is actually mitigation testing hmm. like how long does it take like how do you do that do you have certain creatures that pour out dps and you're like how long with the optimal rot optimal rotation excuse me does it take to kill this character because with self-healing some characters just become unkillable like there's certain levels with three orcs attacking them that they'll never die but six orcs will be attacking them and because they've passed that threshold they'll die so the mitigation um balancing is actually kind of harder than the dps the dps we can just create test dummies and how long does it take to kill you the to kill one dummy how long does it take to kill three and that sort of thing so those are all be taken into account um as we go forward we're looking to do that if we do it um if we do it earlier we'll probably do it for the group content rather than mortar itself um but we may do we may still have some uh tweaks to stuff um because i know that Jesse has looked at the Bjorning and stuff and has some ideas on, on where to go there. And that's probably the top of our list of stuff it yeah. needs. But there's a lot of player. There are a lot of players that have a lot of trees that they'd like touched. So even if the class as a whole is in a good place, it's kind of unfun if, you know, hey, my warden is great, but I every single warden has to have the same set of skills in order to be competitive and that's something that we want to look at too. Yeah, chat's really excited right now about the fact that, you know, we're going to be looking at it. Um I know people are starting to ask specific questions about specific classes and, you know, uh, I I think generally saying, look, we're going to take a look at it. We're going to look at all of them. 
Yeah. And we're gonna we're gonna continue to yeah. Kind the, of the problem with that out. kind of commitment of a individual at this time is we're we're really gonna be looking at it across right. more of a landscape right. as we're doing. We're our not work. we're not yeah. gonna promise you that yeah. minstrel red tier you know yeah. second second guy in your tree is gonna get an update or whatnot. Right. Yeah. We're gonna look at it holistically and figure out things. So obviously, uh, the danger is gonna be high. Mordor is gonna be dangerous. It's it's gonna be. Yeah. difficult maybe. but yes i do think yeah. probably your minstrel red second tier at some point will get an update <laughs> i'm just it probably won't be i have no idea one though i'm yeah. pulling it out yeah. of the hat yeah, yeah, yeah. you know so yeah um so uh, we did get one question which i thought was interesting um forming standing stone games has that added a little freedom for us, uh, for you to think creatively? Are there solutions that uh, we're applying or things that we're planning on doing that this has given us an opportunity to do? Besides, obviously, the general, like, the future, which is we – it's in front. Yeah. Because that's how time works. Yes. <laughs> uh, I think that part of it is the recommitment to making these kind of games is important. Um, I don't. I wouldn't say that Turbine held us back in terms of choice. Mm. Um, they were great to work with. Yeah. They just took a different direction. Sure. Um, but I, I will say this: as great as Turbine is, and as much as I love like all of the people over at Turbine, hey, shout out to Turbine. Mm. Um, they, you know, at the when we were talking about it, they did. They were working on different kinds of games, and so their priorities weren't with these games. I think the biggest thing is with Standing Stone. These games are our priority. Yes. This is this is what we 100%. want to do. Like for the fu for the future. Like this is as it. long as the players are standing with us, we are in this for the long haul. That's the great thing about it. So I, I think love that the that's... fact that you naturally said standing with us. That made me happy. <laughs> I think that that's the biggest <laughs> uh, uh, change. Uh, it's a little bit of an attitude change yeah. as we go forward, which is which is a little different than before. And I, from a business perspective totally respect and understand everything that's happened before us. I don't want to talk too much about that and say anything that could be construed as negative, but on the, I just want to put forth how excited the team is because um, we're all sort of committed now to a common goal rather than have our attention split. <laughs> Company motto hype is happening in the <laughs> chat. That's nice. Long haul squad. Um, I'm going to dig. All right. So um, I don't know. I've, I guess as long as we're asking mildly difficult questions, yeah. uh, we get also a lot of questions from our PVMP and PVP crowds, mm -hmm. and finding time on the development cycle to work on their priorities, you know, we've done some clear balance work really in the last six months uh, regarding that, and while we hear largely positive results on that, we also hear, and can you also do all this other stuff? Um, how do we, what do you see in terms of our plan, our ability to balance a further PVMP and PVP work with sort of our pressing needs here for Mordor and post Mordor work and things like that? Well, the balancing of PVP is completely different than the type of game we usually make, and doing PVP type of games requires a completely different skill set. I think one of the mistakes that we have not mistakes, but one of the uh, realities we live with is as the players gain in power and move on to new content, someone has to go back and basically by hand update the creeps or at least update the modifiers. We say creeps lovingly, by the way. Uh, I, yeah. No, I, no. It, it was a joke. Um, I think one of the things I'd like to do eventually, uh, and this players. wouldn't be for Mordor, is, is have a system where if the players are coming and romping all over the creeps, then the shadow of the area increases. And they get tougher and tougher until, like, the things balance out and have sort of a back and forth that way where there's a statistical um, – there's always a statistical wave so no one gets their butt kicked um, that often. And if you do, you, you, cr you grow in power. And that way um, it would help balance things when we don't have the – maybe uh, cycles to go in and by hand tweak the creeps. But I don't know if that system is possible. I have to sort of look at that. But in the back of my mind, that was sort of something that I was thinking of. Um, the other thing is it's hard to do PVP rewards because 
um, when the server is, when it's late at night or something, it's pretty easy to go in and farm, and we have to be careful about that, where your guild goes in and some people play the creeps and some people play the players, and basically they let each other kill each other for whatever tokens that we put out. So that's the thing that we also have to solve in terms of, uh, in terms of what do we do about that. Um, but I think that there's a statistical balancing that can happen, but that doesn't mean that we can't fix the broken creeps. Right. But I think that we can sort of solve that problem a little bit. Um, we could even go so far as to do a statistical thing by class, which means that the more classes, uh, the more classes failing as a whole, the in both creep and PC side, the more buffs they get. So if you go in as a really powerful class, um, eventually the other classes and creeps will catch up with you. But I don't know if we have the tech for that. That would be a that would be a big system, but that's a more of a long term thing in terms of uh, what we'd want to do. Uh, Lotro being a social game inherently, uh, I have a question about um, how do we plan on expanding and or nurturing uh, the tools for the RP community, or more importantly, to continue to be social with each other. I think that one of the things that I would love to do when building a gaming community and company is focus on how can the players contribute? Mm. Like I think one of the things that we've always uh, looked at from a philosophical standpoint is we, we see the players as consumers, which is great. And many players are happy to be consumers, but some players want to be contributors. And how do we allow that to happen? Right. I, I know that a lot of people have talked about things like uh, player player created content but mm -hmm. i haven't seen that done to my satisfaction yet so i don't know if we'd take that direction Fair. because i don't think that but like what if people could can somehow contribute housing items or uh, mm. uh do you know i think right now for the short term though is i'd like to get more communication with the players in sure. terms of just uh taking their suggestions and feedback on that i think that we've done an okay job of that but we could certainly step that up um, one of the problems right now is that with Mordor, we have a very uh, vivid vision of what we want. So we're not ready to get player feedback until we hit Bull Roarer. And I think the success of Mordor will depend on how well the players can con contribute sort of feedback to us. Um, but going forward, I think that you know the housing has been successful i think that we could do more with guilds i love the music system and i'd love to be able to do more with that but i'll be honest having not really participated other than watching some of the the music festivals sort of like anonymously shout out to weatherstock yeah yeah like weatherstock and such um it's it's hard for me to comment on that right now that's just not um that's just not enough that's just not something that i can i can uh, talk about it. I was actually going to say that there's a part of that that's really a, a answer for me as well, which is um, I think part of that supporting role playing, supporting events, in game community efforts is really going to fall on my shoulders here in the coming year. Mm. Um, I think you've seen since I started in July here that I've I've at least tried to make an effort to expand the community's knowledge of this stuff going on. My basic idea is, you know, I come from a, a world of bands and things like that. If they know it exists, then they can decide if they want to come to it. If they come to it and you put on a good event, they're going to have fun and they're going to come back. And so to the extent that we can support that flow of information, um, we're going to do as much of that as we can here in the really the coming years. I think we've I think we've made progress with the Lotro Beacon, with just general community support, with Lotro Stream here and things like that. But there's always more to do, and a lot of that has to do um, with reaching out to me as well. I w I would love it if I could roll into the office uh, sometime during the midweek and have a complete list of every event going on in Lotro because you guys have emailed me about it. You know, that now I know that I can't always make everyone's, you know, support every event that's out there because the numbers just don't add up in terms of my ability to do that with a certain amount of hours in the day. But I want to know what's out there. I want to support it and we want to do what we can um, to promote that, you know, in the coming coming months. So I think we're going to see more of that. You know, I... I wouldn't take it for granted. One of the things I do not take for granted, like, you know, when I've worked on uh, the other game, we have events and stuff there 
quite a bit, but nothing like what is done on the Lotro side. We have a lot of in-game events there, but oh, yeah. we, the music concerts, yeah. plays. I mean, there are people putting on stage plays and role-playing events and just the we, breadth of community yeah. contribution to the world of Middle Earth here is just incredible. And Corey Olsen with the book yeah. reading club and yeah. you know the fact that uh, Mythgard's putting on stuff, and we have college courses that are yep. literally. And honestly, their I think it's through. one of the game's greatest assets. And Absolutely. it's an asset which is, it, ironically, only something somewhat really has nothing to do with us in some ways. And when we create the world, we support the world the best we can. But it's you folks out there who are doing these creative and amazing things. And so, really, um, I don't think we've. We've, I know everyone has wanted to support it over the years, and we've we've done the best we can, but it's really a matter, I think, of really making that a priority on the community side here. So Yeah. Yep. Um, it, we have uh, some questions about the engine and what's, what that's going to do for Lotro in the future, uh, tweaks or updates or things of that nature. I don't know if we can, we can talk about those plans. Um, uh, the chat has moved quite significantly. Hold on while I look deep within the chat. Um, uh, nothing specific. I think that there, uh, might be just a general question of, um, are there, are there things that we can do with our, uh, with our game engine or to our game engine to further accentuate, um, Lotro as a whole. I think, sure. yeah. I think that one of the things that we've done recently is, what, two weeks now? Yeah. We found a lot of stacking effects behind the scenes that were mm -hmm. causing lag. Mm -hmm. We've cleaned those up. Um, there's still lag, of course, um, and we're still working on that. Um, but I think that uh, that should at least give the players some alleviation. And a lot of these things were things that you may not sort of get. Like there was a stacking minstrel buff. That if right. you spent a lot of time with a minstrel, it would stack on you, and you would have no idea why you're lagging now. I mean, everybody should spend before. a lot of time with minstrels. Sure. I'm just saying. Sure. The other thing is we'd like to move eventually move the client to 64-bit. I think that will help shore up a lot of the memory issues they have, like when you go into sort of... Um, Minas Tirith and, uh, and your computer starts having memory issues because even though you have lots of memory, the... the sort of client is 32-bit. So that's something that we want to address. I think a lot of our um, low-poly objects in the early game could be updated because I think the game looks much better as you go along. So when new players come to the game, they, they may not see our best work. And uh, with Mordor, hopefully we'll be able to move people sort of to more relevant content um, at least for their main character, and uh, hopefully that will that will fix that up. But revisiting some of the old sort of uh, content and doing that. Eventually, we want to have, uh, you know, for the engine to continue to go forward with a graphics engineer. Uh, that's more of a long term. But actually, the world looks pretty good. Most of the things that the world doesn't look good at actually isn't an engine pro issue. It's decisions made early on to have low polys that perhaps some of the machines have advanced far beyond that in the 10 years that we've gone, and we don't have to make those decisions, particularly if someone's running at a higher resolution. And we could clean up some of those things that we don't have later on. Because like some of the screenshots and some of the sort of worldviews I've seen in Mortar look amazing, and even like the stuff that the players have already seen. Yeah, uh, I, I really love the amount of time and care that uh, uh, our user base and uh, even on on Steam, really taking time to take some amazing screenshots um, throughout the whole world. There's a lot of love for the visual aspect, which I'm sure you know absolutely makes Todd Todd go over the moon, right? Um, I mean, this is this is awesome. Um, people are excited about 64-bit. Um, people, I mean, obviously we have a lot more to plan, a lot more to f figure out. Right. And and uh, to figure out you well, know, we're definitely looking all, into the 64-bit. Yeah. The the threat there is that we use some third-party tools, and if we can't get those up to 64-bit as well, um, because these are these are tools that were created 10 years ago, and we either have to upgrade to the latest version, which is a lot of work, or we yeah. have to find the 64-bit versions of the libraries that already exist. Some of that may may foil us, but we're, that's what we're looking at currently. 
in doing that. Yeah. There's a lot of back end work too that we still have to do. Um, yeah. Moving to a new company is was a tremendous amount of work in ways that a lot of people might not expect. Yeah. Like just our tech team was just and a shout out to them because they were great. I mean, they've been They're, on the floor. Yeah, They're just they've been flat doing out. stuff to to yeah. split everything and do all of that, and it went. I know it may not seem outside the company, but it went pretty smoothly considering the large amount of tech that we had to move. So yeah. a shout out to uh, to Rob and his team for doing that. Yeah, yeah, Rob, Rob was uh, amazing. Um, I think everybody's really helped uh, get us back up to what feels like normalcy, at least for me personally. But um, I'm, you know, I'm inside. Yeah. <laughs> and the other thing is that. The community for Lotro is amazing. Like, I know that it's – I just want to reiterate what Jerry said about sure. the amount of player-generated content, the amount of events that they run, the concerts. This is just fabulous. It, it really excites us and motivates us, and seeing the players participate in the game in that way is just great, and uh, I, I want to do what we can to help support that. Awesome. Right. To the future. Did you just call the sponsor? No, I mean, I, I, I might have. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. What do yeah, you think? Well, I, All right, what other questions do we have? Oh, no. man. Um... At some point, we need to let Rob get home. Yeah, well, yeah. Rob, Rob should get home. Yep. <laughs> um, you know, we're talking about, uh, let's see, we have some questions about 4K. We have some questions about uh, scaling UI, which, you know, uh, might be further down the road. Um, you know, yeah, I answered that not rendering. too long ago. I mean, they, we definitely recognize that the UI elements on your nice, you know, 21.9 4K monitor sometimes they're a little on the small side and they don't always scale a while a lot of things scale not everything scales and that's something sure. we're aware of and it's just a matter of finding the time to yeah do the work for on it yeah I'm playing at home on my fort like on the big monitor and it's like wait what and i'm like <laughs> squinting to get in there yeah. so um yeah we definitely want to look at it into that uh ui is really expensive to do um, otherwise, we would have hit it already, but we'll get to it as we, we have a queue of things that we want to get to, yeah. and um, UI scaling is, is on that queue, um, but Absolutely. there's some things we need to shore up before we get to that, in particular for Mordor. Summer 2017. For Mordor. Mordor. <laughs> Not the UI scaling. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Commas are important. <laughs> yeah. It's super important. Uh, uh, grammar awesome. checking my my awesome. verbals yeah so yeah, thank you uh, uh we really appreciate you spending spending time um coming through and um celestrata showed up we need to let rob go home yeah. Yeah, both of you know that's a lie rob yeah i actually go. have uh <laughs> both I, I guess i could say this here i've got both uh celestrata and a little later on tonight uh sapience is going to be checking hey. in as well so uh we'll be uh saying hello to them in just a little bit awesome awesome okay Chat's uh buzzing thank you then uh yeah. I'm, i hope i got to some of your questions i'm sure that there was like five billion questions i didn't yeah. get to i apologize hopefully we can do this in like some other interviews and such. Yeah. Uh, people were asking about a producer's letter. We are planning on doing doing one soon. Um, I know you guys are hearing the word soon a lot, but, you know, uh, we'll, we'll work this out. We got a late night tonight. We got a, a day of mopping up stuff tomorrow, and uh, we'll, we'll get to giving you guys details in the near future. The only reason I haven't got a producer's letter is because it would be like, we're working on Mordor, woo! And that's pretty right. much it, and it's right? in text. It's way more entertaining to watch you actually get excited. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's way like, more entertaining. Yeah. So right now, a producer's letter is until we can like nail down dates and and give sure. a lot more information. It's yeah. like I don't know what I would say. Right. Yeah. And that's primarily the reason why we don't just come out and just say arbitrary date number five. You know, because we're working on it. We're, right. We're I have less of a problem out. than perhaps <laughs> EPs in the, in the past of just giving a date and saying we may not hit this, but yeah. Um, you know, so for that is like, we're, but we we are racing to it and it looks pretty good. And the team seems really excited about it. So um, yeah. I'm, I'm really psyched about uh, where we're going with it. Cool. Thanks, Rob, for joining us. Um, and there is a, well, I mean, thanks. Yep. Yep.
I'll wave you off like Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I got a follow-up question. Will there be an instance cluster in Mordor or three mans, six mans before? So That's uh, going to be the after, right? Yeah, so yeah. the the idea is that any type of group content is going to be coming with a dot release after. Um, Pinion talked to some of that earlier. Sorry if you missed it. Um, can't really divulge all of the information, but uh, we will be splitting up a lot of these interviews over the next couple of weeks or mm -hmm. next couple of days, even. And now uh, let's give it a couple of weeks couple to get it to all twelve hours here. Well, but, I, yeah, yeah, twelve. Yeah. <sighs> but yes, we will begin the process tomorrow. Ooh. Yeah. So uh, excellent. Hey, what do you want to do now? Uh, why don't you put on some music and stuff? We'll take a little break. We'll uh, flip some chairs. I'll go talk to Celestrata, and we'll uh, sort of see what's up next. Where's the stuff? I uh, well, it's just over in the the folder, you know. It's gonna be great. My folder. I yeah. am gonna go into a thing. It's totally. Cool. Or you can just, I mean, if you just want to pull some music, you can just <laughs> find it in the main loader folder. Walls. Yeah. I'm not gonna do that because yeah. I don't know where it is. Um, I'm just trying to find your. So, uh, cool. yeah, so again, it's I just fine. want to thank this everyone uh, for watching. We're on Twitch, we are on YouTube, we are on Facebook. Uh, we, I want to give another shout out to our moderation team from Lotro Stream. In addition, I do want to give a shout out to uh, Gussie, who, from what I understand, basically fed the entire yeah, building. Helped, uh, helped get us some pizza here for dinner some tonight, pizza. and that was very much appreciated. Stream that was fantastic. team is the best. Yep, you guys rock. And uh, we'll, uh, so we'll be taking, just like I said, a little break, maybe five minutes here while we stretch.